Hello everybody, Jamie the Board Game Man, and today we're going vintage. Back to the year 1977 it is a Parker Brothers game, two to four players. It is called Dungeon Dice. Now in this game, you are a prisoner that has been thrown into the dungeon and you are trying to dig your way out. And if you're the first prisoner to dig your way out of the dungeon, you win the game. So let's head on over to the gamer table and I'll show you how to play Dungeon Dice. Dungeon Dice. Let's take a look. Alright, so here are the components of the game. You have yourself the game board. You also have your pit, which is a plastic that uses as kind of like a dice tray. You also have these six special dice. You also have four prisoners. You have these dungeon, or pretty much like tunnel cards. And then you have your instruction booklet. Okay, and that's pretty much what your components are going to be. Now you're going to have six dice. You're going to have 28 tunnel cards, four prisoners, and of course you have the dungeon pit here. All right, so let's go ahead and place this aside. And the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and choose which prisoner you want to be. Let's go ahead and just, we'll do a two player. I'll be the old man, this person can be there. These other two will go back in the box. And that's pretty much the setup. That's pretty much it. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over the dice here. I'm going to show you what are on these dice. Okay. All right, here we go. So, you'll see on the die you have ladders. Okay, I duplicated one of my mistakes. There we go. We have a ladder, shovels, lanterns, knives, and keys, along with these helmeted guards. These are the guys you don't want to get. Like I said in the beginning, the very the object of the game is you're trying to get eight of these tunnel cards to the very end, and that's how you win. And how you do that, how you get these cards, is what depends on what you roll. When you roll the dice, if you get three of a kind, other than the helmeted guard, if you get three of a kind, you actually get to pick up a tunnel card. If you get four of any one of these kind, then you get two cards. Five is three. If you, by happenstance, which is, that'd be really cool if I could see that, if you take all six of these dice and roll on one roll, all six, all six different kinds, then you automatically get three of these cards. So that'd be pretty, and that's only on one roll, not a total of as many rolls as you get. On one roll, first roll, boom, you get all six, then you get the three cards. If you get the helmeted guard, if you end up getting three of these, then you lose what you have gained so far, and then on top of that, you would actually take away one of the previous tunnel cards that you had uh, received on the previous play. Let's go ahead and show you how this works. Now what you do on your turn, you're going to take all six of these, and for every pair that you roll, you're going to place them on the top here in these little corners. Let's go ahead and show you how this works. So I'll roll the dice, and right now I have two lanterns, so I'm going to put the two lanterns up here, and I have no other pairs. Now for every helmeted guard you roll, you would automatically put them up here whether you get one, two, or three, it doesn't matter. Those ones you always keep aside every time you roll them. In this case, that's all I have, so I can go ahead and roll again. You're allowed to roll again if you at least take one die out. So if I roll that, I can never not do anything with it, not take another die roll, my turn ends, okay? But I did take two lanterns out, because I had a pair of those, so I can go ahead and roll again. I'm gonna roll again, see what happens here. I'm pressing my luck here. I get a third lantern, okay? But I also have a helmeted guard, so he's gonna be up here. Now, if I want to, I can push my luck and see if I can get more lanterns so I can get more cards but hopefully I won't roll two of these guards, because if I roll two more of those guards, then I lose the one card I get with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll again. I'm gonna press my luck, because I was able to take the guard and this out, so I get to roll again. Ooh, now it got interesting. Now I rolled a second guard, but I have a shovel here, so I did take one die out, so I can roll one more time if I choose to. Why not? This game is all about pressure luck. I'm gonna roll a die. Okay, I just got a sword, so that doesn't do anything. So I'm going to end up getting one card, because I have a, a three of a kind. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to place him over here, and he has dug one part of the tunnel. I mean, it goes like this, there we go. Okay, so that's how that works. So you put that on start, and then you always put your guy in the far right, because he's obviously he's digging through. All right, so now we're going to go back to the old man over here. I'm going to take all six of these guys. 
And let's see what I got here. We've got, did I just, oh no, I got a pair of shovels. Thought I rolled all six there. And then a helmet. Okay, that's all I can do with that. I'm gonna go ahead and press my luck here, see what I can do. Ooh, five shovels. Look at that. That is awesome right there. So since I got five shovels, I end up getting three cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one, two, and three. Boom, there we go, nice. Now one thing you can do on your turn, say you have another player that's almost to the end, you can choose to challenge this player. Now when you challenge a player, what you'll do is you're gonna, you have up to three rolls. If you roll three of these guards, you are able to take one of those tunnel cards away from that player and place it with you, okay? Now what happens is, you only have three rolls to do it. So you gotta make sure if you roll three times, you don't roll three of those guards, your turn ends and that player is good to go. Um, there is no penalty if you try to challenge that player and you don't roll three, well then you obviously pretty much lost your turn. You can't gain any more for yourself, but you didn't take any from that player. Now, if you end up being uh, successful, and let's just say you actually did take one card, you can choose to challenge that player once more. But however, if the new challenge fails, not only is the turn over, but he or she or you return to the opponent all ton of cards taken on that turn. So if I took one, I'm like, I'm gonna challenge you again, and I fail, then I have to give that tunnel card back. Otherwise, I can just say I'm done and just keep that card and move on, okay? That's the challenging. You can actually challenge a player. If that challenger, you know, that person's right to the end there, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do one more round here. I think you probably get the gist of this. So I'll go ahead and go back to this player, see what we can do for this player here. Oh, now if something like that happens, you do have to re-roll. Uh, you can, you know, so go ahead and re-roll this one. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. There we go. Ooh, three keys. Nice. All right, so I'm going to put the three keys up here. I have no danger here. I have no helmet guards. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Boom. Oh, three guards. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? So just like that, I lost my turn. Okay. So I rolled three of them. I lose. Now, I want to double check here because if you roll three guards, okay. Uh, let's see the player. Yes, that's what would happen on my turn over here. And since I rolled three guards, I not only lose my turn, but I also lose one of these. So now I'm back to two. He caught me, and I lost one of my done my my tunnel cards. Okay, that's what happens when you roll three. Not only does your turn end, but you lose one if you have any here. All right. Okay. So now, if you roll three pairs, let's just say I rolled a pair. And counting the guards, say I rolled a pair of keys, guards, and lanterns. If that happens, then I would actually get one card. So if you roll three different pairs counting the guards, then you get one card to get added on. And like I said, the first player to get all eight tunnel pieces wins the game. And that, my friends, is Dungeon Dice. So let's head on over to the game room, and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so my final thoughts on Dungeon Dice. This is a fun press your luck game. First of all, who doesn't like a press your luck game? I mean, this is a good, good game where you kind of, especially if you have two guards sitting up on the tower and you're like, do I want to roll? Do I want to get another card? Maybe because maybe you're at the very end of the game. Maybe you have about seven or eight tunnels dug and you want to get that final one. You're going to get a little greedy. And that's what this game is, makes a lot of fun is you can really push your luck in this game and it is fun. It is a definitely a great game to play. Um, I got lucky here. I, I found this for 12 bucks over at McKay's. Um, so I, I was pretty happy when I saw it. It's complete and it's, it was in great condition. The box isn't even tore up. All four corners are done. So I was pretty happy with it. So everything was in there. Everything was complete. All six dice were there. The dice were in great condition. Considering this was made back when I was in the uh, ripe old age of three, I am very pleased. Someone really took care of this and now it's my turn to take care of it. So... Um, but yeah, if you can find this uh, classic game, I would definitely get it. It is a lot of fun, and it's just it's just good wholesome fun. You know, you're chucking dice. Who doesn't like chucking dice? Who doesn't like press your luck games? Definitely get it if you can find it. All right, my friends, that is my review of Dungeon Dice. So uh, let me know if you have the game. Maybe you don't have the game. Maybe you've never heard of it, and you're going to look for it now. Hopefully, that's I hope that's the case. 
All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy gaming.